in today's video, I really want you to experience what I'm pointing to, what I'm saying. Don't just watch this video just for the sake of hearing another fancy concept to dwell on. Okay, while you are watching this video, I need you to be fully here. So don't wait for the rest of the video. Actually, just right now, be fully here. And as the words are being said, the moment you find, the moment you notice your mind running away with the words and trying to pick them apart or analyze them, or maybe there's some confusion that arises, in that exact moment, I want you to drop that confusion, stop entertaining it, and simply just come back to the plain listening of the words. Be fully here, allow the words to sink in, and again and again, try to directly go, take your attention towards the experience that I'm pointing to, okay? So that is a prerequisite that I am asking of you before we go on with the rest of the video. Do I have your approval? <laughs> so today I want to share with you the difference between identifying with mind and simply resting as the seeing of it. In one, you are free of the mental projection, which arises spontaneously and out of your control. And in the other scenario, you quite literally have to suffer that mental projection or experience that mental projection, whether it be positive or negative. Again, a mental projection that rose, arose just out of your control and spontaneously. So first and foremost, let's understand that. S try right now for the next 15 seconds. See if you can guess your next thought. Okay, right now, be fully alert. You're not thinking. And now see if you can guess your next thought. This very, very like little exercise is not to trick you in any way. It is simply to show to you that the thoughts that are arising in awareness, the thoughts that you so claim to be, you know, so intimate, so mine, something of your doing, something that you're making happen. Actually, when you pause and you just become silent, you can either try to guess your next thought or if the other pointer works better for you, which is where you do your best not to think anything. You'll notice that sooner or later, a random thought just pops up, which is noticed, and it is popping up without your welcoming of it, number one. And second, what it is projecting, whether it be something positive or negative, pleasant, uh, or unpleasant, relevant or irrelevant to your current situation, whatever it is projecting it is out of your control. It is not something you chose. Understanding this is so crucial for you to even want to go deeper into the what we're speaking of on the rest of this channel, actually. Because you have to sort of recognize that the mind is always arising without your asking of it to arise, and it is always projecting whatever it wants to project. Knowing this, and also knowing that your thoughts are actually the, actually the greatest influence for your actions throughout the day, you can, say, you can see that like, if you are not actually being alert with your thoughts, the thoughts that are just arising spontaneously are just going to lure you into so many different types of action. So many compulsions, addictions, behaviors. So in order to really maybe come back more into control, letting go of entertaining and falling into projections that you did not choose, you must recognize that again and again, that the thoughts that are arising, I'm not choosing these thoughts, they're just happening. Even the average person recognizes this, but because they believe that their thoughts are theirs, these are my thoughts. 
because of that ownership, because of the me and mine, they let it be because they're like, oh, these are my thoughts still. You know, that's fine, even if they're happening randomly. But no, you have to understand that the thoughts that are occurring, they are not my thoughts. They're not somebody else's either. Don't try to take ownership or give ownership. Just let go of this habit of ownership. Just see that thoughts spontaneously arise. They arise from awareness and they subside back into awareness, from nothing and back into nothing. They are made up of nothing other than awareness. But that's for a whole different video. That's not what we're discussing today. I just want you to firmly recognize, and I know I'm being a little repetitive, but it's important. I want you to firmly recognize that thoughts happen spontaneously and what they project is not of your choosing. It just happens. Okay, so that's first thing. Now, as a thought arises, whatever it may be, now you go off into two branches, okay? Either you simply notice that th this thought is being seen. It's just a movement in mind. And you see yourself as the seeing of it, as the knowing of it. It is not this body that is seeing this thought, right? Obviously, it's something subtler than the body. It has to be, what, what is seeing the thought is subtler than even the thought. The thought which is invisible, completely unsensed by the five senses, yet there's still an awareness of it. You say, I know the thought. So that which knows the thought has to be beyond the thought, has to be prior to and subtler than the thought. See this for yourself. So that which knows the thought, you have to see, Mind cannot know what is beyond the mind, but only that which is beyond the mind can know the mind. And you so plainly and easily say, I know the thoughts. So that means this I, whatever it is, is prior to, beyond, and subtler than even this invisible thought that you can't even see from your eyes, that you can't even sense from any of your five senses. But the knowledge of it, the knowing of it, you say it's obvious. You say, yes, I do know the thought and you can't argue that. So either you rest as the seeing of that thought, you acknowledge yourself as simply the knowing of, even if you don't know what that knowing is, it doesn't matter. That's not what we're discussing in this video. Either you just recognize yourself as the knowing of that thought and simply just affirm your position, recognize your position, and allow this movement in mind to arise and subside. Or this thought that arise, arises, if there's not enough presence in you, if there's not enough understanding in you of your true nature as that subtle seeing, if you yourself are just identified as, oh, I'm just this body, I'm just this person, and if there's ownership of your thoughts, right? These are my thoughts, this is my voice. So this thought arises. Now this subtle seeing, which we said is subtler than even the invisible thought. You quite literally take shape as that thought. And now your experience becomes colored by what that thought was projecting. Let me repeat again. This thought happens spontaneously, and what it is projecting is not something you chose. However, even when still, when it arises spontaneously, you take shape as it, and you now experience what it is projecting. Now, you may be saying, now you, that this is when your mind is probably going off into all confusion. So for a second, I want you to remember what I said in the beginning of this video drop all that confusion. Stop trying to figure this out. I'll make it more clear for you. Don't worry. But I need you to come back to me. Be fully here. Drop all your confusion. Drop all your questions. Become empty. So let me give you an example of this, okay? What do I mean that you quite literally take shape as that thought and the experience now becomes colored with what that thought was projecting? The other day I posted a Facebook status. It was something about the mind, right? I said something like, uh, um, 
something regarding the, that the mind does not have to be stopped. It simply has to be de-energized through witnessing. Simple witnessing through dispassion and disinterest. That was generally what the context of that Facebook status was. And a woman commented on that and she says, it's a lot easier said than done. Okay, and I'm not picking on the woman. You know, what, what she's saying I know is genuinely her experience. She's not trying to pick at me either. She just commented, it's a lot easier said than done to just purely witness the mind dispassionately and with disinterest. So you have to see what's happening here, right? She read that status and automatically this thought arose, it's easier said than done. And in her case, this thought that arose was just a natural reaction to her reading the status. She did not choose for this thought to come, to come up and she did not choose what it was projecting, that it's easier said than done. However, because she, she lacked the presence to, and she lacked the understanding of herself as the knowing rather than just this body-mind, she lacked that understanding and she lacked this presence to just see the thought as simply just a, another movement in mind, not take it so seriously. There was great ownership. There was great identification. Again, the thought that arose spontaneously and what it's projecting, she did not choose. However, now it arose, it's easier said than done. And to her, it is so intimately her voice. It is her that is thinking this thought and saying what it is is saying is projecting and then through that it, it already right away blocked her it changed her experience in a way so that she cannot even now if she tried to understand what i was saying in the facebook status now she's gonna have a harder time to implement it or or understand it not only that not only did it color her experience in that way from that point onwards but also now it, right away, it influenced her to want to actually, like it influenced her actions, it, her behavior, to want to write that as a comment on my status. So see how a thought that just arose spontaneously, right? And what it is projecting was not something that she necessarily chose, just arose, and because there was great identification, it, it, she started to experience what that thought is projecting. It is a lot easier said than done. And now even if she tried to practice this teaching, she would have a hard time with it because already she is sort of bought into and subscribed to and identified with the filter of it is a lot easier said than done. And that will color the rest of her experience moving forward. So not only that, but it also influenced her physical body, her action to want to say that and, and comment that. See how just a simple thought influences so much of what you call physical reality. Thoughts in this way are arising spontaneously, moment by moment, and they're saying all sorts of things. They have been saying all sorts of things all your life. And sometimes questions arise that, oh, I need this deeply answered. So that's why even in this video, when I said if questions arise, simply discard for now. Don't buy into the, to, to the, the, the projection that I have a question because then it becomes a fact. <laughs> Some fears arise all the time, you know, when you're doing certain things, certain insecurities and all these things are arising. All these thoughts happening automatically without your choosing and you're buying into them. They're coloring your experience, your 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 world, what you experience as the world, and they're also influencing your actions, so many of them. So again, I will say, either you rest as the seeing, either you recognize, so when a thought arises, either you recognize and simply rest as just the seeing of the thought, not imparting your reality to the thought. The thought has no beingness. It needs to borrow your, your reality. It needs to borrow reality from you. It needs to borrow beingness from you, which it seeks through your attention and engagement. So 
either you recognize yourself as the subtle seeing, the knowing of that thought, and just rest as the seeing, let the, th the movement in mind arise and subside, or you quite literally take shape as it, and you become it. It's not as easy. It's easier said than done. You quite literally become it, and now you, pro you experience what it is projecting. So if it is pleasant, then you're fine. You know, you're usually not complaining about the pleasant stuff. But if it's negative, now you're going to suffer that projection. And in this way, mind identification is ruling your life. And it is creating all sorts of dysfunction. Because in a state of mind identification, in a state of believing in thoughts as myself, dysfunction piles up quite quickly negative thought loops, belief loops, behavior loops add on quite quickly. And this is quite literally the whole goal of spirituality is to show you that you are not just this voice that arises. You are the seeing of it. Now you may be saying another, you know, another thought, which is something that you did not choose. It's just arising. It may be saying, but Sunny, then I don't want to just be like a blank nothingness. And I want to, you know, just rest as the seeing. What is that going to do for me? First of all, again, recognize that this this concern is just another fear that arose, prohibiting you from going deeper into the teaching, keeping you in mind, identification. But recognize that the more you start to recognize yourself as the seeing of, the knowing of the thought rather than the thought itself, the more you stay established, your, your sense of self stays established as your true self rather than constantly identifying as this personality, the more this wisdom will grow in you. It, now you can actually use the mind for the purpose for its allocation rather than use, instilling it with a sense of self, a sense of me. When you instill the mind, the temporary projections which arise and subside with this is with a sense of me your entire existence becomes full of anxiety because you're identifying with that which is temporary with that uh, that has no beingness and when you're learning to establish yourself in your true place your essence your essential self and learning to know yourself as that seeing yourself as that not something that could be read in a book or learned from just a video. You have to actually go towards what I'm pointing to, right? Through all these videos. Once you start to know yourself as that, you can say a deeper wisdom does operate through you, where all the unnecessary garbage of the mind can simply be discarded. And certain things that arise, which may be needed for the for that particular situation, it takes care of itself. You, you know, you can follow those too. It's not like, yo, you just sit and do nothing. But again, I want you to realize that this concern and many of concerns just like this that arise when you see deeper videos like this and deeper teachings like this, they are just also thoughts which you did not choose and they happen spontaneously. The moment you buy into those concerns and those fears and those questions, you quite literally color your experience. So you have to see, you have to become subtle in your seeing that even this is observed. Don't buy into it. Don't identify. Don't become it. Don't take shape as the thinker of it. You know, that's another thing to see. A thought may arise. The moment you engage with that thought, the moment you identify as that thought, you start to be the thinker of that thought. It, there's a, such a deep, intimate sense that I am thinking my thoughts, but you are not the thinker. You are the witnessing within which the, even the thinker arises and subsides. This, for this, you, to understand this, you have to go deeper in your inquiry. No matter how many times you hear me say it or read it in a book, it will not do. It will not satisfy you. I will say again, you are not the thinker of your thoughts. The thoughts and the sense of being the thinker of them arise and subside in pure witnessing. In you. So this is the avenue that I want to open up to. This is what I want to share with you today. 
Now you can practice this throughout the day as thoughts arise. See how many things just arise out of your control. And they're saying all sorts of things. And see how quickly they, they pull you into identification, into what they are projecting. And they're making you suffer all sorts of things and exerting all, all sorts of energy towards what they're projecting. Stay as the self. Here, life is simple. It is not with, it is not just full of constant contradictions because the mind contradicts itself constantly. So you falling into identification with the mind, you will continue to contradict yourself all the time. You will have behavior. You will say you want to do something, but then your behaviors will show otherwise. You know? That's all because of mind identification. This is true freedom. No matter how much personal freedom you accumulate, your money, your cars, your love, all this stuff, if you don't have actual freedom, none of this stuff matters because it will always keep you restless and in contradiction with what, you, with what you're saying. And it will always make you suffer things that you will feel like are being imposed on you. <laughs> Practice. Thank you for watching this video. Now, here are a couple of ways that I can be of direct help to you right now. Okay, and I'm going to link everything that I mentioned right now in the description box below. So number one is you can join our free personal mastery quest community, uh, our Facebook group on which you can interact with me personally and ask me all your questions. I love the community over there and I do my best to reply to you as soon as possible. Okay, number two. If you have not yet watched my free Ego to Presence Masterclass in which I teach you how to implement the teaching of self-inquiry into your life step by step and deepen your meditation and deepen your self-inquiry profoundly, then again, check the link in the description box below and go watch that masterclass. It is one hour. It will bring you tremendous value. Okay. And now lastly, if you want to work with me and my team personally and you want me to help you dissolve mind identification and realize your true being, then you can check out my coaching program, uh, The Higher Consciousness Shift. All the details of it are down below in the description box. Just click the link that is under section coaching. Okay, and it'll take you there um, to, the, to my personal website where you can go through all the details and book a free call with me and we can decide if we're the right fit to work together. That's all for today. I will see you in the next video.